morning, folks. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Servant of Christ. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and under the ages of ages. Amen. So it's been a while since I've been on here. Um, so I wanted to say that this uh, video may end up being a little lengthy uh, this morning. Um, had a little conversation with a, a dear friend the other day concerning Christmas trees and concerning Christmas uh, being a pagan holiday and, and these sort of things. Um, person said they felt uncomfortable about putting a tree in their house because that's something that pagans do and did. Well, um, actually, um, the rea that's not really the reality of it. Um, let's talk about that this morning. Pardon me. Um, now, there is this notion out here, uh, especially among Protestants, that uh, Christmas is uh, a pagan holiday. Therefore, they don't they won't celebrate it and so forth. Um, that's predominantly true for the Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, um, which deny that uh, we should be celebrating Christmas because the New Testament does not have it say anywhere that we should um, observe Christmas, which is the birth of our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. They object because they say, well, that's not really the day he was born on. That was part one of their objections. Um, and they object to birthdays altogether because John the Baptist's head was cut off on a girl's birthday uh, as a request for her birthday gift. And so therefore, nobody's allowed to have a birthday or to celebrate Christmas simply because the Bible does not say so. The Bible says, for for example, uh, has Jesus saying to us to re remember his death, his burial, and his resurrection, but it has nothing. It's silent on should we observe his birth or not. Well, listen, um, let's not get to the point where we strain on a gnat, as is said, and swallow a camel. Um, you have to ask the question right off, right from the gate. Um, now, is there anywhere in the Bible that forbids, in no uncertain terms, uh, the, the celebration of birthdays, or does it forbid Christians from observing the birth of our Lord and our Savior? Uh, if you've read the Bible, which I've read the Bible from cover to cover, obviously you're going to come to the conclusion that that is not true, that the Bible does not expressly or specifically forbid the observation of Christmas. So therefore, if we have no command from the Lord himself or from one of the apostles that uh, we should not observe Christmas because that is a Christian hol that is a pagan holiday, then uh, we shouldn't be too concerned if somebody wants to celebrate Christmas. Now, it's very obvious that if there's no command against it, uh, that uh, doesn't mean that we're, uh, well, it can mean that we can celebrate it. I mean, we should not be afraid to celebrate Christmas um, simply because the Bible does not forbid it. Uh, we can go ahead and add to the scripture and add meaning to the scripture right to our own peril and to our own condemnation ourselves. So let's not add or take away from the scripture. Um, now, for those who think that they are more holy than the apostles, uh, then I have news for you, friend. Uh, if the apostles did preach against something in the Bible, neither should anybody else be doing it. Because uh, our um, doctrines come from Christ to the apostles and from the apostles to us. Okay? So if it wasn't important enough to have a specific command against a certain thing, then it's not important enough for us to be worrying about now and, start, and splitting hairs over. Okay. What really happened, and I, I'm going to tell you that uh, when Christianity first spread up into Europe, uh, they noticed that uh, pagans were going to the temple, their pagan temples to worship, to have celebrations on the day of the winter uh, solstice, which is the longest, the shortest day of the year, which falls around the 25th of December. Um, so therefore, uh, the church, seeing that they were all gathering in their pagan temples across Europe to worship their pagan gods in honor of their festival of solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, uh, the priests and the hierarchical um, members of the church started their own celebration on that day. And they said, we are going to uh, have church on that day over here. And we are going to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so we want to invite everybody over in the pagan world to come over here to the church because we're going to have a celebration on the same day. 
So effectively, what they did was they Christianized a so-called pagan holiday. I'll put that in quotes. Uh, first of all, we need to come. We need to remember that uh, the reality is that the devil has nothing of his own. The devil originates nothing. Instead, he specializes in taking God's word and the celebrations and the, and the uh, customs of the church and perverts it to his own end. And so uh, this pagan celebration of winter solstice, uh, the, uh, the Christian church has Christianized to make into Christmas, originally didn't belong to the pagans to start with. And so that leads us to the second part of this uh, little bit of, uh, of a discourse today on Christmas and Christmas trees. Are Christmas trees okay or are they not? Because uh, she says that she didn't want to be uh, involved in practices that uh, is known to be pagan. Well, see, that's just not the truth in today's world, is it? Most people in today's world would not have a clue that pagans used decorated trees during the solstice. Uh, what they did was they Christianized it. it. I mean, no, trees originally belonged to God and not to the devil at all. So whether he takes it and perverts it to his end or something like that is unimportant because uh, it didn't belong to him to start with. Now, anybody who follows along with that notion, this line of reasoning, shouldn't be driving an automobile because you see automobiles are used in committing crimes, are they not? Do not people uh, rob banks and use automobiles for getaway cars or have they not done this? Does, does this make it wrong to have an automobile? Uh, just because a young woman requested the head of John the Baptist um, on her birthday does not make birthdays evil does not make the celebration of a birthday inherently evil. Uh, we, we are free to do what we want, you see. We live in freedom um, to do whatever we want. Now, are we to refuse driving cars for the reason that they used cars in committing crimes? No, no more than we should refuse to celebrate birthdays because some man, some king in, uh, in the New Testament chopped the head of John the Baptist off on the birthday of his stepdaughter. You see, that's really not the point, is it? Um, the whole point is, what are you doing? Uh, is it glorifying to Christ or is it glorifying to man? So let's talk about trees. Uh, first of all, as we know in the book of Genesis, uh, the Lord uh, created man and the animals and placed him in a garden called Eden. And he placed in the middle of that garden the tree of life. And in the midst of the garden also was the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? He commanded man to eat of the tree of life freely, but he commanded man to not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So trees belong to God, do they not? Even the tree of knowledge belongs to God, does it not? Everything here, the Lord created himself. And he has a specific purpose for that. So already you can see that there's a problem with uh, pagans taking trees and using them to celebrate their pagan gods. They're celebrating darkness and they're in the dark because they're not in the, in the light of truth, which is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And by him, the Bible says that God created all things. In, in the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John, by Jesus Christ, the Lord God, Father in heaven, created all things. So originally, the tree belonged to God to begin with. So man, as we know, rebelled in the garden. Did they not? And disobey God and eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the Lord expelled them from the garden and they brought death upon themselves and upon all of creation. Groans, even till now, of death. So we are guaranteed we're, we're going to die because of what Adam and Eve did. Now, there are Christian groups, especially in the Protestant world, that say that we are guilty of the sins of Adam. Call it the original sin. Well, let me tell you something. Well, I'm an Orthodox Christian. Orthodox Christians do not believe that we inherit the guilt of Adam's, of Adam's sin. We do not inherit the guilt, but we inherit the propensity for sin and to, to commit sins from our ancestor, Adam and Eve. Now, we don't share in the guilt. Instead, we're guilty of the, our own sins. So therefore, little babies who have never had a chance to 
become baptized and never never was anointed and brought into the community are not going to go to hell if they pass away before they receive baptism. Because we do not have the guilt of Adam. They were born free of the guilt of Adam, but born with a propensity to sin with a clean slate so that when they become of age, they sin, then they do it on their own and they do it um, being guilty of it. Okay, so let's specifically talk about trees because you see, we hang things on trees, don't we? On a Christmas tree, do we not hang ornaments and so forth? So even though Christmas trees weren't used in the beginning, but it really actually was an old German folk custom for Yuletide and for the Yule season, which is a Western winter solstice. Instead, uh, we inherited this custom from the Germans and the Norwegians and the Swedish people and the D Danish because they were doing it in Europe. And so what a wonderful, wonderful way to symbolize the crucifixion of our Lord. Now see, Christ was born to be hung on a tree, was he not? Uh, according to the Orthodox beliefs, Christ went to his death and went to that tree, went to that cross voluntarily. He didn't have to go, but he went voluntarily for our sake and was allowed himself to be put on that tree and nailed to it. Now, if he was hung on a tree, we hang things, ornaments on trees around Christmas time to uh, commemorate that he was crucified. The Bible says that cursed is he who hangs on a tree. So anybody that was hung up on a tree back in those days, and even now, is considered cursed. We hang things on trees, which is a Christianized uh, custom. We took the tree and Christianized it. Now it has taken on new meaning. It is a new symbol. It's kind of ironic because later on in, uh, in history, the Nazis came along, which were German, uh, who Nazianized the swastika. Did the swastika not come from peaceful vegetarian people in, in, in the Far East? And the Indians from the Jains, the Jain cult, who were peaceful and uh, uh, practiced nonviolence towards any creature, including insects. I mean, they were so they are so extreme that they will carry around a little broom with them so they can sweep insects out of the way when they're walking so they don't kill anything. You see how the Nazis misappropriated something that was originally meant for peace and a symbol of peace and turned it into a symbol of evil? Does that make the symbol inherently evil or sinful? No. It is not the fault of the the swastika that the Nazis uh, adopted it and used it to symbolize the brutality of the Nazi regime, is it? It is still okay. Uh, they still, in fact, use the swastika in the Far East, in the Middle East. You'll see a statue of the Buddha, for example, and he will have a swastika in the middle of his forehead. Is the Buddha a Nazi, or was he a Nazi? No. So, Christmas trees may have symbolized one thing for pagans, but it's it has taken on a whole new meaning for Christians. Now, you know that your Savior, who brings you life, who saved you, was hung on a tree. So now you hang things on a tree in memory of that, of the crucifixion of the Lord. He was born, I say born to that end. He was born to hang on a tree. He was born to take the curse for us. You see, Christmas trees really symbolize the crucifixion, does it not? We hang things on the tree in celebration of our Lord and Savior, who was born in a manger of a virgin mother, the Theotokos, the mother of God, the Virgin Mary. And his destiny was to hang on a tree. You see, uh, there's nothing wrong with trees. Trees aren't evil, nor is the whole notion of bringing a tree into your house and putting, it, and putting things on it and hanging it in your house. Uh, just look at it like this. A tree that you bring into your house, whether it's a live or whether it's an artificial tree, you hang things on it, is actually a bouquet, is it not? Who would say no if somebody, let's say a woman said no to somebody who brought her a dozen roses and refused to put them on her table, saying that it's a sin. Now, is it a sin to have cut flowers in your house? Is it a sin to put a bouquet in your house? No. Uh, so we can look at a tree now, a Christmas tree now as a bouquet. It is not just anything. It's not just something that's uh, harmful to your spirituality, but it's something that leads you and points you up, points you to the crucifixion of our Lord, a necessary component of your, your salvation. 
If he didn't come and give his life for us and die and hang it on a tree, there would be no freedom from the curse of death, from the curse of sin. So I, I hope that that may help to enlighten you somewhat. Put put up your trees. Uh, in fact, I think that if, if you put up your trees, that is a wonderful, wonderful um, symbol for the for the crucifixion of our Lord and our Savior. Does the Lord not say to remember his death? He didn't say celebrate his birthday, but he did say to remember his death, didn't he not? And Christmas trees are a symbol of the death. However, we have adopted it and Christianized it in the modern world. Uh, I believe Martin Luther was the first one to bring trees into the celebration of the birth of our Savior. None of that is forbidden in the Bible. Can you find anywhere in that Bible that forbids us from putting a bouquet in our house? Uh, there is a scripture in uh, the Old Testament in one of the prophets. I'm not sure exactly where that is at the moment. It says, do not bring a tree out of the forest like the heathens do and stand it on the corner and tie it to the corner and deck it with silver and gold. What does that mean? Does that mean do not put, bring a tree in and deck it up? No, it doesn't mean that. It says do not bring it in as the heathens do. Do not imitate the heathens. Why? Because heathens worship pagan deities, false gods, and they worship the actual tree itself as somehow being some kind of a god. Do you see the difference? If you bring that tree in and you put decorations on it, they're not going to be pagan symbols, are they? They're going to be symbols of, of, Christ, of the Christian faith. And put that up, you're not worshiping that tree. No more than it is to, uh, than it is worship of an icon when you kiss the icon. You are venerating the person that who is depicted in the icon, and the veneration, which is respect and honor, goes to the person who is depicted. See, in the Orthodox Church, uh, we do not believe that anybody dies in the Lord. When you die, in, when your body goes to sleep in Christ, you did not die. You go to be with the Lord. And so these saints that we have depicted in these icons, we kiss the icon, we know that the saint, even though the body sleeps and they have gone back to the dust, they are alive with the Lord. And so, th therefore, it is not a sin to venerate and honor. Now, worship is another matter. We ask the saints to pray for us. Do we ask the saints to inter intercede uh like as if we were talking to God? No. We ask them when they stand before the throne of God to intercede for us and to say prayers for us. As simple as that. So I want to leave you with that this morning. Um, feel free to put up a Christmas tree. Okay? Because it is not evil and it's not a sin. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever and under the ages of ages. Amen. We hope that you will like the program. Um, I haven't put out a video now for over a month. But we hope that you will like the program and that you will like and subscribe, and uh, you'll make comments in the box. Thank you very much. God bless you.